thanks for joining us. Um, I think we're on the homeward street to actually starting to come back together again and worship as we're meant to worship as God's family and as God's saints um, together. So let's make um, the best effort we can this morning. Please sing out in your home. Please open your heart and your spirit to receive God's word and into your life today. It is our food. It is our strength. It is what will keep us going through this difficult period. So, Father, I thank you for today, the opportunity we have to worship, to adore you, to bring, Lord, Father, our adoration to you, Lord. And I pray, Father, that every one of us in our homes, Lord, will sense and feel and know your Holy Spirit. Father, whether we need challenging or we need comforting, we lay our lives before you, O oh God, today. And we ask that your Spirit will have his way. Your Spirit will speak, Lord, Father. Your Spirit will speak words of comfort, words of challenge, Lord. We are servants, Lord. We're never going to stop serving you, Lord. And we constantly need you and need your equipping and impart it into our lives. Father, I ask this in Jesus' precious name. morning I want to, good morning church, I want to read um, one, uh, one beautiful verse, it's from Romans 11, 36, for everything comes from him, everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory, all glory to him forever, amen, all glory to him. Let's worship with everything we have because all glory to Him belongs.
beautiful, wonderful family. I love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we glorify your name. Who am I that you are thinking of me? And, and still you, you do that, you think of me, you watch over me, you know every thought. I am just giving you praise this morning, you deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise.
into your hands I commit my life day by day as a living sacrifice let's sing that one more time into your hands I commit my life says this in Luke chapter 24 and verse 35. It says as the, the two men walked along the road, it says that they realized, they recognized him as they broke bread together. They realized as they broke bread together, this was Jesus who was in their midst and who was in their presence. And I want to encourage you as we break bread together this morning that you will ask for a fresh revelation that it's Jesus who is in our midst, it's Jesus who is in our life, it's Jesus who we're remembering, giving thanks to for his amazing love and amazing salvation. So just take a few moments to do that together where you are. Father, I want to thank you that your mercies, your goodness, they are new every day. And I pray, oh God, Father, today as we spend a few moments just remembering, in obedience to you, in devotion to you, Lord, in remembering your great love, your great sacrifice. Give us all a fresh revelation. Give us something in our heart and our spirit that is just going to ignite that enthusiasm and passion for you again. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So I would normally give you notices at this time, and so I just want to take a few moments to do that this morning and tell you a little bit about what is happening this week. Um, you know, everything will start at 7 p.m. Um, on Tuesday, we're going to have, again, another YouTube live service where people from church will be saying hello to you from their lockdown on Wednesday night this week, it's going to be equipping women for battle. So I trust that the ladies, you will pull together um, and support one another, strengthen one another um, during that time. And then on Thursday, men, we're going to carry on um, with um, M3, which is our program for mentoring men for the master. And as you probably know, if you were on this week, Andy's going to be leading us through um, devotion study this week so courage you really important you know we don't neglect meeting together and then again if you um, are committed to giving to this church 
and, and the ministry of this church, then I encourage you to bring your tithes, your gifts, your offerings, and you can do it online at the church website, or you can do it on Facebook. It will all come to the church um, eventually. So thank you for that. God bless you. I'm going to bring to you again a word that I feel God has led in my heart. I've been asking God and saying, God, I just want to keep, you, you keep bringing me something fresh just to minister to the church at this time. And I want to read to you a verse that maybe you know so well. It's in 2 Corinthians and chapter 4, verses 8 to 9. And this is from the New Living Translation. And it says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we are not abandoned by God. We are not down, but we are not destroyed. Amen. And so as you can see from that little slogan there, I do want to ask you this morning, are you an egg or are you a tennis ball? Are you an egg or are you a tennis ball? When you hit a hard place, do you crack up or do you bounce back? When you hit a hard place, do you crack up or do you bounce back? back you know this week just waiting on God asking God you know just to speak into my heart you know I love the moments in the garden last thing of the night the day looking into the skies and I'm just asking God to drop what he has for you for me into my heart and you know this week as I was just waiting on God he reminded me um, of you know um, of the human ability to be resilient the human ability that there is to be resilient, to bounce back, to not crack up and spill out all over the place. But the human ability that there is to be resilient and to bounce back. And now, the, the reminder came when I was thinking and praying for Arthur, our Arthur. Now Arthur is, if you're not a part of this church, Arthur is known to me as Ancient of Days. He is the oldest person that I know. And I was reminded about resilience because a few months back, before all this COVID-19 thing happened, Arthur climbed a ladder, a ladder, and fell off the ladder, fractured his hip, ended up in hospital, ended up in a rehabilitation home. But you know, Arthur, facing an operation because of its hip that was cracked and fractured, determined day after day that he had his green lights and he had his red lights and he had his amber lights. And he determined that he was going to make it to the green lights and that was to do with his walking and his exercise. And you know, his resilience, his mental resilience pressed him on so much, the doctors were amazed and said, this is healed. You don't, you don't need an operation. So that stirred in me, you know, that God has placed within us a natural resilience, a mental resilience. You know, God has given within, when God created us, he put within us this natural resilience in the human body to fight infections. For one cell to fight another cell so that we can get stronger. But you know, as we've discovered in this crisis, that when we're weak and we're vulnerable, we've discovered in this crisis that um, when we are weak, we, we are in danger of the infection taking control and taking over us. But God has put within us a natural resistance. And you know, God, I think, has put within every human being a mental resilience, a, a mindset that, that, that people can make up their mind to be determined to, to bounce back and to carry on whatever the crisis they are facing. Now, I am sure, like me, you have seen many people, you've seen many people crack up when they hit a hard place. You've seen people when, when, when life has just become so hard 
they emotionally crack up. They break down. I'm sure like me, you have seen believers who when they hit a hard place, they spiritually break down. They spiritually crack up. And you know, as, as we're coming through this crisis um, of COVID-19 and we're trying to come out of it, you know, the media, the politicians, the people in charge are constantly reminding us that, you know, because of this crisis, people are going to be motion, emotionally broken. People are going to come through this into the recovery period and be emotionally broken. And I think we're all aware of that. And as a church, you know, we are aware of it. Our ministry from the church as a counselling centre, just want to say to you, church, we've been blessed this week because God has provided for us um, as a church, as a ministry, £20,000 this week so that we can help people with their emotional brokenness through this period. So we thank God, we acknowledge God for his blessing upon us. You know, because... And, but, I, but I fear this. And this is, this is where my fear is for the church, for us as a church, for believers. My fear is that we will become comfortable in an uncomfortable place. I hope you received that message this week. You prayed over it. You waited upon it. You applied it to your own life. My fear for the church since we've gone through these six, seven, eight weeks of lockdown and isolation, that we can so easily become comfortable in this uncomfortable place. It's an uncomfortable place because we are not designed for isolation. We are not designed to be apart. We are designed to be together. We are designed to be community. We are designed as the church to fellowship together, to be community together, for the strong to support the weak together, to grow together in the knowledge and the height and the depth of the love of God. And so my fear is that we settle down into this uncomfortable place of isolation being apart. My fear is that we wander away from his word. My fear is that we settle down and we do without fellowship. My fear is that, the, that we do without waiting on God. We do without worshipping God. My fear is that we will become spiritually broken. Not strong. Not passionate for the things of God. You know, I read this statement. You, can, you cannot stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. You can't stop the spiritual attacks, and you can't stop the crisis. You can't stop the panic that there is in our world today. You can't stop the temptation. But you can learn to overcome them in the power and in the strength of God. And that is all the more reason we cannot become comfortable in this uncomfortable place of isolation and separation from God and his people. You know, over and over in the Word of God, I see many of God's servants, when they hit a hard place, they cracked up, they fell apart, and they wanted to give up. So, you know, if you've been at that point during this time, you're not on your own. Like Elijah, he ran off into the wilderness, he wasn't designed for isolation. He said to his servant, you stay here, I'm going off on my own. We're not designed for isolation. I wanted to give up. Moses had had enough. What did you give me all these people for? Gideon went away and hid in a wine press. Job, you know what Job went through? 
He had so many times had enough. He cursed the day that he was born. Peter, and the pressure was on. He ran away and he denied the Lord. They all seemed to have cracked up. Wanted to run away. Wanted to give up. When they hit a hard place. But you know. We talk about them today. Because they made it through. But you know remember. They didn't know they were going to make it through. They didn't think they would get to the other side. We know because we can see the Bible. But they didn't see the conclusion of the story. We do. But they made it through. And I don't think it was just down to their natural or their mental resilience. I think they made it through. I think God's people made it through. I think we will make it through with supernatural resilience. Supernatural resilience when we hit a hard place. The supernatural resilience comes as a result of the gift of faith. The gift of faith enables us to press on in the hard place. To what God has promised to us. You know before COVID-19. We had promises and excitement in our heart. We had the excitement. Well I certainly did. That that building that we have put up. Is not just another building. But that building is going to be known. As the house of the Lord. An awesome place. People will say surely God is in that place. This is a gateway to heaven. We had that promise. Eight weeks ago, God has not changed his promise. Just because we have hit a hard place and a difficult time in our journey with God, as, as, it, as so many people have done, God has not changed his promise. And you know, spiritual resilience that is, that is inspired and motivated and stirred by the gift of faith, it helps us to press on. Whatever the hard place, it helps us to hold on to the dreams that God has placed in our hearts. You know these people in the Bible. You know they didn't press on. They didn't, they didn't keep going. They didn't keep bouncing back. Because they had the desire for success in their hearts. They, they, they had the pursuit of wealth in their hearts. They, they, they were looking for the applause of all the people. When they got to the finish line. You know these people in the Bible. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have to count up the number of likes that they had at the end of the day after what they had done. But you know what kept them pressing on? Not the applause of men, but to bring glory and to bring honour and to bring praise to God. That was their number one priority. That they would be people who would bring honour and praise and glory to God. You see, the gift of faith it's mentioned there for us in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 9. The gift of faith is not just that miracles can be exercised in other people. The gift of faith that can be imparted to us helps us see ahead. It helps you see the wood for the trees. It helps you not to throw the baby out with the bath water. It helps you keep your focus. It helps you keep your priorities. It helps you see that the promise of God has not changed. It helps us to believe the word of God that says he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That hasn't changed. That remains absolutely the same. The gift of faith. It helps us press on. It helps us hold on. It helps us not let go. It helps us not to walk away. From what God has called us to. Don't get comfortable in that uncomfortable place. This uncomfortable place. Don't settle for this uncomfortable place. Get a hold Get a hold of what God has put in the heart of this church, your church, your heart, your life. And you press on. Because this is not going to last forever. We will get through this. And when we get through this, the other end, let's get through it stronger, determined, not cracked up, not in pieces, but determined. Because you see, there's a supernatural resilience 
that comes as a result of the gift of faith. But let me say this to you. Sometimes faith doesn't take away, doesn't, sorry, doesn't take you out of your problems. But faith can get you through the problem. Faith doesn't always take away the pain. But faith can give you the ability to handle the pain. Faith doesn't always take you out of the storm. But faith can calm you in the midst of the storm. And you know my prayer for you today is I pray that you pray the same prayer. That God will give you a gift of faith. If you feel emotionally you're breaking. If you feel spiritually you're breaking because we've hit a hard place. Now's the time for that injection of God's supernatural resilience that comes as a result of his faith. And then we will truly hear the world say, how are you coping the way you're coping? How are you managing as you are managing? And you may be able to say back to them, because God has given me the strength. God has given me the supernatural resilience to get through this one. And I pray that every one of us, every one of us will experience that injection, that unctioning of the gift of faith that gives us the resilience in the hard place. You won't crack up. You will bounce back stronger and better in God. You will bounce back. I'm reminded, finally, let me say, one of my favourite psalms is Psalm 73. And it's a psalm of Asaph. And Asaph looked out at the world and he seen that they were jolly and they were happy and they were managing and they were getting through and they were prospering and it was all going really well for them and Asaph looked at himself, look at me. He says, my foot almost slipped. He said, I almost fell. I almost cracked up. But then when you get to verse 17, it says, then I entered into the sanctuary of God. I came into the presence of God. I came into the holy place. I came in to fellowship with God. And then I began to see things differently. I began to see, yes, their final destiny. But then I began to see things differently. And I began to choose that the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my strength. The Lord will see me through all that we're going through at this time. Father, I pray for everyone listening this morning. And I pray, Father, that those that need that supernatural resilience will just fall on you this morning, will lean into you this morning and receive that supernatural gift of faith into their heart, into their spirit, into their life. And they'll know that it's you, Lord Father, that is carrying them through the storms. And it's you that is picking them up in the hard place. It is you, Lord, that is putting them back together. I pray for any, Lord, this morning that have wandered and have become comfortable in an uncomfortable place. That, Father, they will determine this morning that they will enter into the sanctuary of God like Asaph. And that, Father, they will make your word, your will, your ways a priority in your life. They will make worship and they will make fellowship a priority in their life. They will take back the ground that the enemy has robbed them in their spiritual walk with you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you. Let's sing this last song. Your love is amazing. Your love is amazing, steady and changing. Your love is now. From beneath my feet, your love is a mystery. How you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a
wonderful week. Join us during the week and uh, we love you.